Hey guys, this is Rob. Welcome to another Revit electrical video. In this one, we are going to have some tips and tricks on how to connect electrical loads located on different floors of a building all together onto single circuits. So stay tuned. <laughs> So here we are in our Revit electrical tutorial project that we've been going through and I'm on second floor. My goal here is to install receptacles just down the corridors on multiple floors because this is a seven story building and the corridors pretty much stack. So I will have receptacles stacked vertically above each other in each corridor. And they'll also be about 50 feet apart on the, on the floor between each other. And so sometimes a design decision comes down to whether we circuit these horizontally. So, you know, from here to here, 50 feet away. Or do we circuit them vertically, floor to floor? And of course, the argument is cost. If we go floor to floor, we only have of circuiting conduit conductor then we if we go horizontally with the more than 50 feet to get between them so often we will circuit these vertically now how to do that in Revit eh, can be a little tricky just in the uh, workflow of physically picking these all on multiple floors which means multiple views and then getting them all circuited together so I'm just going to kind of walk us through how I deal with that and hopefully you can uh, get something out of that. So let's just uh, finish adding our receptacles. Right now, I just have floor two, second level done. And also part of this is how to actually add receptacles that stack without having to try to memorize where they are on each floor. If I jump into third floor, it's like, well, I know that receptacles in here somewhere and over here. Let us see if we can find a way to, to do that. So if I take both of these and hold down control, of course, to pick the second one. And if I copy these to clipboard, up here, copy to clipboard or the typical Windows control C also works. And then if I go to third floor, I want to paste these in here in the same place. So the way I do that is up here on the left. If you don't see the paste button, make sure you're in the modify tab. Go up here to paste, aligned to current view. So it'll paste the elements in this current view, which is third floor power. So do that. And I get a yellow bang here, a, a warning instance origins does not lie on the host face. Now that what that's telling me is it is still trying to connect this receptacle to this, to the wall that was on second floor. Well, that wall does not extend up through the model. The architect has obviously created a separate wall on this third level so it can't connect to that wall that's okay we're going to change that so what we do here is click on that receptacle and on the right on the on the properties it says it's still on level 2 12 feet 8 and 11 256 inch high so it just copied it higher on level 2 we actually want this to be a level 3 or third floor receptacle so all we need to do is hit the scheduled level drop down to level three and now you can see it's actually one foot six inches above level three apply that now it also is unhosted see here no not associated sometimes they call this an orphan it is not connected to this third floor wall we can just pick a new and put it and it just needs to be close enough Remember, these plans are diagrammatic. They're not down dimension to the inch or anything. So there, now it is connected to second, to excuse me, to third floor at one foot six in roughly the same location in the corridor. Now this one, the corridor changes a bit. It's a different configuration here. So I can either move it here to this wall or I can move it to the other wall over here. Again, that's kind of a design decision for practice, for our purposes here. We are going to do the same thing, move it to level three, one foot six, and then let's pick new, let us go ahead and put it right here for the purposes of this. And it is really picky, there we go. So you would do the same with the rest of your hall, uh, rest of your corridor receptacles. 
So we're going to do this on the other floors as well, quickly. See here, I don't have modify. Let's open modify, paste, align to current view, same issues. Change it to level four this time. Now we're 22 feet above level three. Level four and pick new, get it placed approximately where it was. Same with the other one. And it's just repetition, repetition as is often the case with these multi-floor buildings and multi-family. So that's enough for now to show the intent. So let's go down to the second floor. Now we want to start circuiting these. So what I do first is circuit the first one. So I click on it like circuiting anything else, hit the power, find our panel. Let's go to panel 1A. I'm going to call it I'll give it some fancy name like Receptacle Corridor West because this will be on multiple floors and then I can go floor two through seven. Name it how you like. Now this is circuited and if I hit, a, hit tab to get onto the circuit I can even do a home run. So we'll do the home run and then we will tag this home run. So now I have that circuit. Now I want to circuit the others. The main key in the order of circuiting is I really, it works best if I have all of the floors that I'm circuiting already in my, in my model already generated. So I already have these in my tabs. So if I was going to clear up to seventh floor, I would want to make sure I have all of these ready. It just seems to flow better if I do that. Then I would tab till I get into the circuit and I want to edit the circuit. Edit the circuit. And it automatically jumps into add to circuit. Well, now I need to jump into third floor and I still have the add circuit active. So now I can pick the next one. If I were to double click fourth floor, I lose the add circuit, but I can go ahead and connect it again if I need to. So I can just go all the way up and I don't have the rest of the receptacles in, but I could just go all the way up and then just say finish. Now I have circuited all of these. And if you click on this, you can see that it is circuited to panel 1A over here on the right, circuit five. So I have circuited these all vertically. Now, if I want to document these as what circuit they're on, can I just tag the receptacle? Well, if I just tag the receptacle, I'm getting my electrical fixture tag that I would typically use for mechanical equipment. I'm not getting a circuit number. So instead of that tag, I can typically just use a, a home run, which will, again, indicate what circuit it's on. So I can do that. That just means you have a home run on each receptacle, which isn't always the best way to document this. I've had uh, contractors say that that's confusing for their installers uh, because it's not truly a home run. It is just a circuit interconnecting. So what we really need is a tag for receptacles that indicates this information, 1A5, without the home run. So maybe we can get rid of this home run. Well, the tag disappears too. So we really need a special tag just for these receptacle circuits. So if I go to tag this with this mechanical tag, if I click on the tag, I can actually change it once it's put in to some other kind of tag. Now, what do I have here? I have a device, device circuit tag, device panel tag, so I could do this and get the panel. And I could install another tag. I, I, I copied or I, I did similar for this. So I got the same kind of tag. Now I can change this to the circuit tag. And that's kind of a, a way to do it. It's cumbersome. It has two tags. Or I can merely just customize my own tag. So what I will do is edit this tag 
edit family. This is an advanced topic, editing family. So if you're not up for this, I understand. If you are, we will just go in here and we will create our own tag instead of just panel, which is a label. Let's go into the edit the label. And this is where similar to, I, I did a video on schedules and parameters and labels and all of that. We can put whatever we want in here. So we already have panel. And then we also want to put in circuit number. So we have panel and circuit number. Okay, sample value is going to be circuit. And we want these all in one line, so let's stretch this out. And I would like a dash between panel and circuit. So, in here, I can put a suffix after panel that is a dash. Panel, circuit. So let us save that as a family. And I'm just saving it again in my local project electrical folder. Electrical device, so now I'm going to call this electrical device circuitine tag, something that identifies it. Okay, and I will load that into my project. So now I can actually go to my third floor. I can tag this with my new electrical circuiting tag. There's 1A5. And then same with fourth floor. Get rid of these. And tag it with my new circuit tag. So now when it comes time to tag things on the other floor, for example, if I do the same thing down here, and I circuit it up to 1A to another circuit, receptacle, corridor east, Floors two through seven. Give it a circuit. Now, if I were to tag this circuit, I get the circuit tag. If I tag the receptacle, I also get the circuit tag. Now we have two different kinds of tags, one which will tag the home run and one which can tag an individual receptacle on other floors. And if you want, you can also include things like, if we go to systems, and add wire ourselves. We can, as long as we attach the wire to this little square that pops up, which is the equipment connection point, we can include some wire symbols like that. And if you want to include things like down and up to indicate that this circuiting is vertical, you can do things like that with just text but the circuiting is actually a smart tag. So just do that throughout your entire building and everything that's stacked. Uh, this works well too for, um, let's say at an elevator, you might have uh, uh, fire smoke dampers or any kind of you know, multi-floor connections that are on the same circuit, you can do it that way. So if this was valuable to you, I'd appreciate a like and uh, until next time. Thank you.